Hello Facebook world, Tanya Hiltz from Cloud Business Services and Tanya's Bookkeepers Bootcamp, although you didn't already know that. If you're watching, you're probably on one of my channels or Twitter world or Instagram world, wherever you're watching this. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. We are on the official day two for Scaling New Heights, but the vendor day, official day one at the end of the day. And we have with us Andrew from Tech4 Accountants. So Andrew, Say hi and let people know what they hi, do or what you Twitter do. Twitter universe and Facebook universe and Instagram universe. There are other universes. LinkedIn universe. LinkedIn universe, uh, metaverse. And it'll be on YouTube as well too, so YouTube YouTubers. universe. Yeah, so yep. uh, to everyone out there. So Tech for Accountants, we are IT specializing in the accounting industry. So specialist for bookkeepers, tax accountants, um, everybody under the accountant umbrella even if they're doing audit and things like that it's been our specialization uh, for the last couple years so we're not just hey i'm an it like i'll fix your stuff but you know focus on the actual needs of the bookkeepers and accountants and that world as a whole and focus all the work that we're doing basically on that field so Dentists are not interested in doing business with tech for accountants. Chiropractors are not interested in tech for accountants. But we were in business six years before the tech for accountants piece. So we've got 2,000 customers that just won't leave us. They're like, I don't care if you're called tech for accountants. Like, we still love using you. And it's like, all right. But That's like, a pretty good compliment. Pretty good compliment. I, I suppose so. I mean, it's like, oh, I can't get rid of these customers. and. It's like, what if I raise their rates? And they're still like, no, I love you. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, well, I can't in good faith keep doing that. So just stay with us. And, you know, we had to weed the client garden, get rid of some of the eh, people that we didn't love. And so now, happy, wonderful community, but specializing with bookkeepers, enrolled agents, CPAs, and people in the accounting world. Basically, QuickBooks matters to you. That's <laughs> awesome. So I can ask a few questions here. So because I'm sure a lot of people hadn't heard of you because honestly, until I spoke to Richard Roper Roberts, I hadn't heard of you either. And um, so we need that needs to change that because we've had conversations and yes, I absolutely, you know, we get along. Let's just say we get along. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so when you are doing that and you're working with the accounts and doing the IT, is it just in general? Is it, you know, Microsoft? Is it, hey, you know, your QuickBooks isn't working all that great, we can help with that? Is it setting up the computers? Are you using, you know, certain software that you can access things through security? You know, yeah, detailed. so so kind of blanket statement, everything that you said, yes, out there on QuickBooks desktop, moving it to the cloud, uh, things of that nature. But a lot of what we do, instead of just hey, we're a bunch of tech people and we do tech stuff and just trust me blindly because you don't know any better, so use me. What we do, all of the practices we do are just straight from the IRS okay. and they're different publications. So even though like bookkeepers aren't answering to the IRS, that's still the framework that we use for everything that we do. So it's not like a, well, my tech person said I needed insert tech word that's over someone's head where they're just like I, I don't know he said I need it who am I to tell him he doesn't you know if an accountant told me I needed to whatever it's like you I don't, trust him because he's your accountant right? and that's not what you do right <laughs> right right well I've, I've been on the wrong side of that uh, recommendation several times but you know uh, end of the day so we're putting all the security protocol that the IRS is requiring for people that handle taxpayer data. And then the IRS says, you also need to follow FTC regulations. So do 200 pages of that too. And then we just sprinkled on AICPA best practices just to make it. Just that much more fun, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the, the benefit with that since we only see maybe 20 different software from all of our clients. Everybody learns those 20. And so instead of having to know everything for everybody and just 
well, this guy knows how to do this one, and this guy knows how to do this one. It's just like we all are familiar with all these different software, so it's easier for us, which is better for the client because we're familiar with it, so they're not yep. explaining to us, here is what QBO is and how it works. It's like, okay, yeah, what's wrong? Right. <laughs> like, skip, skip all that. Like, right. I get it. So then you would be able to also handle, because I know, you know, we talked about the main stage um, that was on. So for anybody not here, it's a lot about security. And I do know an accountant who I am not going to name. He can come clean with his own story, but who had his firm system breach. So you would also, because you kind of cover the general blanket, you would cover that as well. Yeah. So the remediation is one of the hardest things to do because if you had done the proactive work so it's kind of like if you were doing taxes and it's like if you had a good bookkeeper that was reconciling the books then doing taxes is a whole lot easier when you've got the bank wrecks yeah but we are in emergency 911 scenario and it's like okay well let's just run the backup you know just restore the backup everything's good it's like well we never set up a backup it's like well get a time machine and let's <laughs> let's go back to last week and get that really set up because it looks like you know troubles troubles ahead so the remediation is part of what we do okay. and we've you know unfortunately there's only two types of clients that we get there's proactive that want to stop things from happening and the reactive where something very bad has happened and now they need it fixed immediately and the proactive ones don't fall into the reactive category because if something were to happen, it's just, ah, let's undo that. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. Well, and you know, it's really important. So for those of you out there who are not doing something like this and being proactive, it's very important to think, how do you feel when your client comes in and says, I need my taxes and books done tomorrow and drops down a garbage bag full of receipts? You want that client to be better. So yeah, yeah. That's, so that's exactly, we need to get into that thinking ourselves if you're not nudge, nudge, which wink, 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 right? Yeah, well, and you know, being here and talking to all the different bookkeepers and the people that are in the, in the accounting industry, you know, people are talking to us and saying, look, I know I should be doing this and it's just kind of, you know, I, I got busy and I, I totally get that, but at the same time, just one time where it doesn't go well it, it's like riding in a car without a seatbelt yep. and it's like okay I didn't get in an accident today therefore I don't need a seatbelt and it's like you really need the seatbelt in case an accident happens you know most people wouldn't say I'm the kind of person that's going to get in an accident today like accident Absolutely. Know, not on purpose so having having the proactive pieces in place in case something happens is super important. Then you've got the other proactive pieces of we're able to identify problems before the user is able to identify. Beautiful. So for instance, say your, your printer is broken. You don't know it's broken until you need to print. And then it's, oh my God, like it, I've got my client in front of me, the printer's not working, like turn it off, turn it on. Ah, this thing's garbage, blah, 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 blah. You know, you look like an idiot. Meanwhile, on our side, for our clients, we'll get a notification and say, oh, the printer's offline. We say, Beep. all right, turn it back on. Actually, it's scripted, so it says, printer's offline. And we say, well, when it does that, turn it back on. Right. Script, automatic. Right. And so we're, we're keeping the uptime higher because the problems just aren't happening as frequently because there's a lot of things that should be done and I don't know if it's, it's in there. It's, when's the last time you rebooted your computer? And the concept is these are proactive things we know we should be doing, but, you know, it's not a problem until it's a problem. Yeah. And, I mean, that's how most people handle their IT stuff is if it ain't broke, don't fix it, which works until it doesn't. Absolutely. And I just have to say, yes, I laughed and smirked when you talked about the printer because that took me, I have PTSD from yesterday. We bought <laughs> yesterday. a mobile printer to come and print these little tags and no, I tested it. It worked fine. 
apparently not. So I ended up losing myself plus the three people that worked on it, probably about six hours yesterday. That's six hours I'm not going to get back. And then I ended up just coming downstairs and having five pages of paper. That's all that needed to print, five pages. I should have been here. I should have done this beforehand because I'll never get that time back. And these are all the things that, you know, two days ago, it's like, oh, a proactive printer, whatever. And then when you're in that moment, it's like, I would do anything to not feel this way anymore. Yep. And that's why these things are so important, but I completely understand on the side of, oh, it's never happened yet. But it's like, one time is a pretty bad time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and that's great. And you're right, being proactive is so important. And like I say, just yesterday, just make that it work. Was just yesterday and just make it work yep and that's exactly what I'm like oh gosh don't know if i'm gonna be bringing that printer to your conference again <laughs> made me rethink the whole i'm like oh we can do this great i can do this and we can you know provide better service to you know some of the sponsors but, oh, the print and... shop down there it's only like seven times the cost of what it what it does if you get it from like vista print four pages of paper cost me 13 dollars now so those of you who know me, I'm from Canada. That's $13 US. That's like 17 Canadian. What could I have bought with that? Well, in this hotel, probably nothing, but still I could have <laughs> yeah. bought with that, right? Yeah, in this hotel, <laughs> literally nothing. Nothing. Yeah. But no, like exactly. Our, our little handouts, I don't know what I did with them. Oh, here it we go. fell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was originally $700 wow. to print these. And so I was like, I was, sorry, it was $1,400 for wow. postcards. And then the guy was like, well, I cut it in half so that, you know, we, we made it smaller so we could fit the postcards two to a page. And it was like $700 for some postcards you shouldn't have. Literally, you shouldn't have. That's that's robbery. But, yep. hey, it is what it is, right? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Printers. So it can happen to anybody. And that is really good and really smart advice that... Yes, we need to be proactive. We wish our clients would be proactive. We all need to be proactive as well, too. So that's really important. So we're at Scaling New Heights. Where, but sorry, where can people find you if they want to come by and see you in person? I want to say it was booth 104, but like there's no, there's no like rhyme or reason behind like the, the things. But like if you see the Expensify <laughs> gigantic like building that they made, we're like, close to it All like, right, in the center of yeah. in the center of everything and expensify your bills in the mail for that uh, that little plug no just kidding <laughs> yeah. But yeah you're almost right you're almost right in the very middle you know yeah. between both doors right in the very middle so yeah so pretty happy with uh, with the location absolutely we, we picked it so. so hopefully you're happy with it <laughs> right yeah now do you have any conference specials or anything yes yes so we're we're taking 250 dollars off of the onboarding for all of our new clients nice and uh 20 percent off of the monthly which is the proactive maintenance all the software that you need to stay protected things like backup so that if something were to happen it's just not a problem it's, it's a minor inconvenience of undo okay let's not do that again and then you just keep living your life that's so easy it's yeah. like the staples easy button i don't know if yeah. they have that down here in the states too if it's only no we do we do do you yeah we, staples we easy did. button I, I think in my office i think someone had given it to me and so where's your tech for accountants easy button that's what you need to have that is what we need to have you do actually i i did a webinar with lissio and they actually had promoted it as here's the tech for accountants here's the easy button go to techforaccountants.net and they'll just do all this stuff for you. that is the easy button beautiful <laughs> sorry we're obviously in the vendor hall a little bit of backfire there um, so that's awesome so another question quick question then is what if you've got somebody who's at home and is having FOMO because they're not here in person can they still get that same deal with no. limited time Yes. I'm like, uh oh, did no, I just the, put my foot in it, my mouth? No, it actually, it actually even says uh, it, within 30, 30 days. 30 days of, of the, the conference. conference. Okay, so, so just pretend you were here and buy it 30 days when you're done, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, we're only scanning every single person that we're talking to, and we only track, like, everything in the company. Okay. We won't know! So that real answer is really no, or maybe an exception? Uh, I mean, I'm like, hey, 30 days. 30 days, okay. You know, if someone wants to do business with us, we're not going to say, no, you didn't physically attend the conference, and therefore don't qualify for a special. Awesome. Yeah, so anybody, anybody, honestly, your people are wonderful, so... Even if it was day well, 31. thank you. Not day 32. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You heard it here. You heard it here. So is there anything else that you wanted to bring up or let anybody know before we wrap this up? I, I just can't stress enough how important it is. And not just as, well, you're in IT, so of course you say that you should do this because that's how you make money. But just the proactive support, I can just say from seeing it time and time and time and time and time again. People that get in a pinch, there's ransomware or something is broken. We we had one client and they, back in the day, we used to let people pick and choose their plan and just now the IRS says you need it and we agree with it. So we just, everybody gets back up because it's super important. Yeah. And, but we had a client and she was like, she's like, oh, I don't want backup. Like I've got, I'll, I'll skip the, the nerdy details, but she had a hard drive that copies itself to another hard drive. So if one fails, then she's got the backup. It's called RAID 1, whatever. And they both failed, right? Well, one failed, and we told her, hey, one failed. You bought them at the same time. They've been doing the exact same thing for the exact same amount of time for the exact same work. So one failed. You really need to back up number two because it's about to die. I don't know if it's today, I don't know if it's tomorrow, I don't know if it's a year from now and you get lucky. It's really important that we back this up. She's like, nah, I don't need it. And then the next day she's like, my server won't turn on. And it's like, oh no. Yeah, well, it looks like the hard drive failed. She's like, well, fix it. And it's like, that can't happen. So here we're in a spot, she needs to buy, or she had to send it to Data Recovery Center. It starts at $10,000 with no guarantee wow. to be able to get it back, and then no guarantee of how long it'll last, and then what they do after they get it recovered is they make you buy backup <laughs> and host it in the cloud. So, I mean, $10,000 wow. plus they were down, and this is right at the beginning of COVID too. Oh. So everything, this is like February of COVID. So everything took forever to so, fix. And... So everything, just pure nightmare. And like maybe a couple hundred dollars wasn't like a bad thing for it to just worked but yeah you know people i understand because you know it's like ah well why do i want to spend money for this if that's probably not going to happen to me and it's not really about the statistics of it happening or not it's more about just be covered on as many things as possible and not just well buy this buy that buy this buy that but just a holistic like let's make sure you're protected yep and have backup have you know best practices in place so that just you can just run your company and it just works well because what can happen and this is always the time murphy's law you are just near the end of tax season something happens you now can't continue your work you have cost your client to be late you're paying your clients penalties there is so much involved in that and one thing we need to remember that i hope we all know Tech is meant to not last. It is meant to be replaced. Those big companies want you to buy more. They don't want to say, here, you only need one of these forever. So just like you said, it will only last so long. Yeah, and the landscape of security has changed so much. Yeah. And just in the last 10 years, you know, it used to be, oh, I slap on Norton and I got my cybersecurity. And it's like, it's not how it works, but like you're close enough to write and now it's just like uh, you've got Norton. You think the hacker that like knows how to make viruses and malware and like ransomware? You think he didn't consider make this get around Norton? They go after Norton, Microsoft. They go after the big guys. They, my understanding well, is it's almost like a game to them and a challenge. Oh yeah, this is easy. We can get into the it, big guys. That's, that's literally how it works. It's yep. cat and mouse. Of uh, hacker changes this, makes a new strand and antivirus catches it when one of their clients get it, and yeah. then, or enough of their clients get infected with it, and then, 
well, let's fix that. And they say, well, we made this one. So infect as many as we can, and then they fix it when they fix it. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. so stopping that from happening in the first place is really where a lot of like what we do comes into play. We do security awareness training so that you're okay. familiar with here is what a phishing email looks like. This is not from Microsoft. You can tell it's not from Microsoft by this, 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 this. Here's the ways you can spot it. So if you get one, it's like, is this real? I'm like, well, I'm familiar that this is suspicious. Here are things that I can do. So human error is unfortunately where a lot of it comes from. 92% from emails. Wow, that's a big percentage. Yeah, so it's not just, oh, I left my computer on and they infiltrated and hacked everything. It's you clicked on not Microsoft and typed in your password to not Microsoft. And that's, that's how these things happen. Absolutely. All right, so I think we should wrap it up because there's a little bit of noise in the background. Try and talk a little louder. But yeah, thank you for so much, Andrew. That was great. I've learned stuff today, which is awesome. And I just want to stay out a little bit later because you guys are going to see. And thank you, Andrew, for being a sponsor for these little beagles. So I'm sure lots of you guys have already seen the little beagles. Um, so if you find one of these little beagles, there are instructions with all of the tech for accountant tags on here. So yes, you can adopt it. It's very small. It does not eat a lot. Does not have to go inside. Does not lead exercise. So it's the most wonderful little pet there is um, $50 from this is going directly to Beagle Freedom Project which is as again many of you probably know my Rosie is a Beagle and close to my heart um, but we just ask that you make sure that you type tech for accountants you know take a picture of yourself a selfie maybe you know let Andrew and the team know what you've named the puppy something like that but yes definitely going for a good cause and thank you very much for that and thank you oh, for yeah. helping on the social side as well yeah well it was great being here thank Perfect. you so much thank you all right have a great day everybody we'll see you later bye